It is the 10th anniversary of Kakadu, the musical, a theater production that traces the evolution of Nigerian society from the earliest days of independence down to the present. It is also an attempt at portraying the nation's gradual but steady descent from the height of oneness and unity into acrimony and societal chaos. For a greater understanding of what the project is all about, we are now being joined here by Bernard Ogwewi, who is the musical director of Kakadu, the musical, and Kanayo Omo, the artistic director. A warm welcome to both of you. Thanks for joining us uh, on the morning show today. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. All right, let me start with Kanayo. I'm, I, I was tempted to say Kanayo, Kanayo. <laughs> <laughs> but yours is Kanayo, oh, yes, isn't it? Kanayo. And you're the artistic director. Yes. It's 10 years of Kakadu, and you, of course, have the privilege and the honor of being the artistic director since inception in 2013. Okay. How has it been? How many times have you directed Kakadu, and what will be different this time around? Um, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, first and foremost, it's great to be here. Um, Kakadu is an evolving story. Mm. Uh, so, and it's an evolving story that's connected to not just the process of creating it, but to the society in which it's coming up. Mm. Uh, so as Kakadu evolves, as Nigeria evolves, Kakadu evolves in a way. <laughs> but um, I've had the opportunity of um, being at the helm in terms of artistic uh, direction. I think for since uh, 2013, when we started. Yeah. Um, it's been about five different iterations, including our international forays. Um, what's different this time? It is bigger, it's more real, it's deeper, mm. and um, just it's much richer. Staging-wise, there's a lot that's changed, so the audience will have the opportunity to engage <laughs> in a more uh, interactive way. Yeah. Um, at the same time, uh, in terms of a whole new cast, mm. it's very important to us that every time we run the show that we have a whole new cast because it's, uh, you talk about Nigeria in, in the 60s, uh, the stories about these young folk and you know, the decisions they had to make in building a nation and you know, how that whole journey went across. So it's important that you're dealing with folks who mm. are bringing that truth to yeah. the stage. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mr. Abe, you're the musical director, <laughs> and music has a lot of sentimental value for us, especially when we're talking about a historical story. So is, are there any songs that we should be expecting? What's the vibe? What emotion are you going to be evoking for the show this time around? Well, the beautiful thing about it is that we borrowed music from that era, mm -hmm. and of course, we took the high life section of yes. that era also, and unfortunately, it descended into chaos in terms of the war. And it was a movement from then on where Celestine Uku comes in. Um, we also had a bit of our own song, um, especially Crossroads, um, where happiness all of a sudden just vanished and we had to rebuild completely. And we had to go to the Marvin Gaye era also to yeah. ask, look, we know what the problem is. What is going to be the solution? So what is really going on? Why is nobody listening? Mm. And it's been interesting because it's a, pro it's a project um, after Mr. Uche Omokedi's heart. And I am sure we've done justice to that. Yeah. He has always hammered, the music must be good, the music must be good, but you know what? The artistic sentiment towards that you know, yeah. musical is also of great import. Okay, let me stay with you, uh, Ben, uh, before we come back to K.O. Um, the music part also excites me. Uh, I saw Kakadu in 2017 during the Lagos at 50 you know, production. You know, and of course, I was wowed. Uh, but immediately after that, uh, you took Kakadu to South Africa, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And I followed the reviews uh, from the South African media. I'm, I'm part of what um, many of the critics, you know, highlighted was the fact that the music, the, 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 the music component of it was largely foreign, mm. you know, and, and they highlighted that. Um, is that what we will encounter again this time around? I mean, because... Kakadu, when people hear of Kakadu, you know, you want to listen to Celestinoku, like you said, a bit of fella, you know, and things like that, you know. But then when you have a foreign journalist saying that, oh, it's more of, you know, Euro, Western type of music than African or Nigerian kind of music for a show called Kakadu, it, it is, you know, it, is there... Is there a conflict? Well, history is very, very good. Unfortunately, it's thrown out the window in terms of schooling. So <laughs> that is what it's all about. Yeah. Um, when So Mukidi wrote it, he was specific about the music of that era. We could have changed it to the music of, you know, 
the boys of now, but we've decided to stay you know, with what the story is all about. And I think he agrees with me because they lived in that era. They lived through the war. <laughs> we, we just enjoyed the spoils of reconciliation then. <laughs> okay, so Carter, what was the music like? A few that some of us will remember is the fella part of it, the high life part of it. But of course, we know that everybody was dancing to Marvin Gaye, dancing to, you know, uh, James Brown and all of... Uh, how, how was it and how are you reflecting that in the musical? Well, Kakadu is Nigerian story. Absolutely. You cannot separate Nigeria from its international influence. Mm. The truth is, as a new nation, we were born out of not just our own indigenous strength, our culture, our experience, but the influence of young folk as it's always been across the ages. It's what's happening everywhere else. Mm. So it's impossible not to have Millicent Smalls when your parents were wearing those, you know, those <laughs> tight skirts and going for the parties. It didn't come from, you know, from the village culture. It came from their desire to embrace an international experience. So okay. Kakadu does the same. Mm. So you're going to have, yes, all the way from that time, from the chubby checkers, mm -hmm. all the way down to today's world. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Now, interestingly, <coughs> Interestingly, what you're going to find yeah. across the board also is <clears throat> that before you get to today's world, yeah. you are going to find all sorts of journeys. It's a musical history. That's right. It's a musical journey for every Nigerian that you can relate, irrespective of your age, irrespective of the period you were in. As Ben has said, I was there. Well, I was there at the tail end, so <laughs> don't let the white hairs fool me. But, <laughs> but across the board, you realize that the music is going to take you on that experience. Mm. As you said, it's a soul thing. Yes. Everybody can connect with their emotions when it comes to the music. And it's been particular for the producer to make sure that the music is central to our journey. Mm. So the audience is going to enjoy, is going to experience nostalgia, mm. reality. Yeah. And then they're going to think about tomorrow. And it's not just, it's a dialogue between generations. The older generation has something, the old it. Mm. So yeah. all that. You know, we've spoken about the music, but I want to go back to the story because this is a very personal perspective on history. Mm. And so for people who do not know what Kakadu the musical is, do you want to give us a little insight to what the story is? Yes, Kakadu is a story of a dream of a, of a person who has built this ideal of what Nigeria should be. Mm. And within that experience, you have this young, four young couples and what their journey is from being part of that dream to facing the realities of what comes out later. It's a combination of a political satire as well as it's a love story. It's a story of Nigeria looking at the core theme of relationship. What is the fundamental base of how you build a nation? It's relationship. Mm -hmm. So Kakadu plays within the dynamics of real-time relationship mm -hmm. as it plays within the political relationships. Um, so for an audience who wants to know what Nigeria is, yeah. how we got to where we are today, where we've been, mm. and possibly where we could be tomorrow. Kakadu is the show you need to see. Um, I know a parent who was, who was so passionate about making sure that their children came to see Kakadu because they had tried explaining, but they just needed. And I remember interviewing one of the young men after the show, and they were like, I didn't know. I saw pictures of my parents but I never knew what their lives were like. Mm. Mm. So it's very important that you understand that this story is a dialogue of generations. Mm. Something very needed because you have a young generation who tend to be finding their own way, but they mm. need to realize that mommy and daddy have been there before. Mm. <laughs> mm. And so you might need some advice in terms of where they are going and understanding how we'll deal with tomorrow. All right, I mean, this, this is a question for, for both of you, and, you know, either of you could uh, uh, go for it first. What did you see in Mr. Uche, you know, Mukeri's script, story, that drew you to Kakadu? You know, a lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, yeah. talking about, you know, an aspect <laughs> of the Nigerian history that was entertaining, but at the same time that was also, you know, um, soul-searching. Yes. That was conflicting. Um, what drew you to Kakadu? Ben the script. Kakadu. Through the lens of his own consciousness. It mm. was, for me, it was the first set of lines for the, the prologue. It just reminded you of CMS. 
if you, were, if you were standing there, you saw a plethora of things happening at the same time. One woman frying a car, another person taking children to school, a lot of us hustling for buses <laughs> then. Then you find the Aladuras ringing bells going towards Barbage. The way he described it was a lot. We couldn't see it through then, but the music itself basically described it. And I'm going to retire this time from the <laughs> So stay with the music around and play the ground. There's too much conflict inside of me to carry it through. Mm. It, it, it's for me, um, when I first got into the story, I think it took me a while. I read the script, loved it. Um, the fact that I'd known Mr. Mokedi, um as a person, mm. as a lawyer as well, but as a creative. And this was work that is a passionate experience. So I think I was drawn to it for two reasons. Number one, um, I connected with, I guess I'll use the term the zeitgeist of what was going on in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. This is a story that's tapping into us, irrespective of where we've been, it's us. Um, and so to have a story that you can go through and every generation can relate to something, mm. that was powerful. Yeah. But I, I wrapped up that, yes, this is something I want to be at when I looked at the journey of the music from the beginning to the end, irrespective of whether you live in diaspora yeah. or whether you are, it was something that was just, I said, no, any show that can cover this much truth mm. needs to definitely get to where it can. And I'm glad to have the honor to have worked, to continue working with him. Yeah. And with this gentleman who said <laughs> on public that he will retire <laughs> next year. So. <laughs> well, this question is for either of you. Kakadu has been around for 10 years. It's a successful show. What about it do you think translates to audiences, not just in Nigeria, but you know, South Africa, like you said? What about the show makes it successful? What is about it is unique? Um, the work that goes into Kakadu isn't so much so just our creativity as directors mm. or as the writer, mm -hmm. but it's the passion of the cast and the crew. Each year, Mr. Mokedi insists that we recast to reflect that world that existed at that time, yeah. the real people. So Kakadu has been successful because it's been focused not just as a show for entertainment, okay. but the other side of what theater brings, which is tutelage, That's right. capacity building. Mm. So the people, Kakadu's had 10 years of different cast members who've come and gone, moved on, played their stage, and, you know, and moved on to other things, some moved on to other parts of life. And that, I think, is the core success, that this show is not simply entertaining an audience, but it's building a people with a vision, yeah. mm. who've had the opportunity to say, this is my way of saying, yeah. of being, of living this time through history and to now. Mm. Um, so I think that, has, that for me is one key part that has you know, really made a difference. Mm. Yeah. In addition to that, for the music, it was a case of, oh, I got an education because my father was a musician, compared to, oh, stick with the white collar jobs, oh, this is basically how it's gonna go. And you could see, you know, like the Peter Kings, you know, of, of yesteryears, the fellas as, as is. Yeah. Made Mad, Mad, is different from Femi. From Femi. Yeah. This is exactly what it is. So yeah. the education, the transformation from generations to come, is right there. Mm. And what we're doing with the music is, if there are no instruments to play, the voice, the voices we have will do exactly the it same thing. It becomes the instrument. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, two, two questions. Uh, first, uh, uh, specifically to you, K.O. Um, Kakadu has played outside of Nigeria, South Africa, and Davos in Switzerland. Yes. You're based in the UK. Well, Kakadu hasn't gone to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there, right? <laughs> so that's one. Second part, which I think, you know, both of you, you know, could give us insight. Where did the word Kakadu come from? I, I know that there's a Kakadu National Park in Australia. Yes. You know, and it speaks to the Aboriginal settings and, you know, the old languages there and stuff. Where did we pick it from? And what does it say to us? Lagos, Nigeria, 2023, the word Kakadu. I'll start from the latter part, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make it, yeah, even though, I, and I'll try not to monopolize. Um, there was actually a club called Kakadu. Kakadu. I know that. Um, you know, around where Lago Meiji is, yeah, Nava, yes, Boston. Correct. Now, the interesting thing isn't just the name. Hmm. The name in terms of the origin, uh, the, the proprietor, the founders. Um, 
I'm not quite sure in terms of it, it could have that connotation towards that freedom, the park, or what it is in the Australia, yeah. uh, in Australia itself. But it's more the experience of what it was. Hmm. Hence, the reason that I know the writer and the producer put that forward. This was a club where folks, everybody Absolutely. who was anybody, yeah. went to Kakadu. Mm. This was <laughs> club where it's interesting having. I guess we are saying really. It's interesting having, yeah. having, you know, after the show, you really get a lot. I remember, I know people who, you know, names I could mention now who've come to see the show and said, that was me. Mm. I have an auntie who came to see the show and she said she and her husband would always keep to do what they call Sunday jump. Mm. Sunday jump, yes. And, you know, they would go to Kakadu. This is what it meant. So, it, as I said, it's the Nigerian stories. In terms of the name, You're right. um, this is emblematic of not just that club, but what it stood for. Mm. So as a name, it's also a name that is a theme, not just in the meaning of the name, but what the name as a brand stands for That's and right. stood for in that time. Hmm. Um, in terms of it's coming to the UK, it's a work in progress. <laughs> and so I, um, it is uh, it's interesting. I, I just finished another piece um, in the UK earlier this year, and I had the same question you know, when I was doing an interview in terms of what I was going to be working on next. And Kakadu has gone to Switzerland for a stint. It's been to SA. And I believe its journey is continuous. It's still growing as a musical. Mm. And um, yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> West End and Broadway. West End, absolutely lovely. lovely. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> we have a phrase in that um, in the musical called the Echo Show. That the, is the Echo why Show. It's significant to Lagos. All right. Anybody who was a champion elsewhere, it's part of the lines, became someone else in Lagos. Mm. Lagos gave you a broader horizon of whom you could be. And as, at least Lagos that we know now, you find out that everybody who wants to hustle basically comes to this town. Yeah. And unfortunately, you can't take the money of this town away, like I just said so. <laughs> that was very funny. All right. So you're speaking, the musical speaks to a certain time 1965 to I think about 1974, right, of Nigeria's yes. history. And our history is very important, right? And we're trying to, and you said that theater not just entertains, but it's also a tutelage aspect yes. for the cast. What about for your audience? What are you trying to teach them about Nigeria's history? Especially about this, you know, specific time where we had a civil war, we had the lead up to the war and the aftermath. Ben, do you want to take the lead or I could? I'll just take it a little. Okay. Um, we ne I never got the chance to see the war. My parents did. Hence the reason they moved from Benin to Lagos. Um, the political space has created, you know, uh, a rumble for us to see. And we have chosen to make a decision on where to go. Are we stagnant? That's a question. Do we know what to do with it? That is another question. Um, until we all consider that, look, if we stand as one, we can only build this nation. Mm. That is the only way it will work. Absent of violence, that is, as long as we agree. You know, but we all have to come together. It's, it's common sense knowledge. Mm. It's, it's, it's difficult, but it's not yeah. impossible. Yeah. That is what Kakadu brings to the table. Thank you. Um, Kakadu in general is going to do more than history. It's living history. So for the audience, it's an opportunity to remember what was so you know what you want now and what you expect for the future. When I say a dialogue amongst generations, that's what history is. Mm. It's an experience passed down. And the benefit of theater is that it's an experience, experience relived, not just reimagined, but relived, and the opportunity for you to connect to those emotions and those truths and themes. Yeah that will help us answer the core question of the show, how do we build a nation? Mm. And so um, history is very much a part of what the audience will experience. Nostalgia comes from experiences that have passed yes. and have co coalesced with you know, your emotions yeah. and your, your memory. So yes, mm. it, it's very historic. The audience will experience and enjoy what Nigeria has been, is, and can, can be. Okay. 
So, so where is Kakadu playing this time around? Um, it's playing at the Shell Hall in Muson. Okay. Um, the 28th, the 29th, and the 30th of December. Last three days. Yes, last three days, mm -hmm. taking us into a new year. Mm -hmm. So we can have a fresh perspective yeah. of where 2024 can take us. All right, before we let you go, um, what are your thoughts, and this is for both of you, uh, regarding the way that, at least this year, you know, we can see it you know, clearly, the way theater, live theater, is, you know, uh, claiming its own space with the other forms of entertainment. You know, Lagos State Government has just said that they will also have the, they will return the uh, uh, One Lagos Fiesta, which yes. is now branded Greater Lagos Fiesta, mm -hmm. the same three days that you are having. Um, all the movies, all the movies are there, you know, etc. But here we have theater, we have Kakadu, we have Saru, La Terra Culture, we have um, The King Must Dan Dance Naked, I believe, oh, yes. mm -hmm. at yes. um, Global, Global. Global. Yes. Uh, and then Joseph Edgar is also bringing something. What do you, is that something of a renaissance to you? What, what, what are your thoughts? It is, um, theater, as I said, is not just entertainment. Mm. Mm. And for a nation needing that tutelage, um, its time has come. And, you know, we appreciate our sponsors, you know, those who have helped and who are helping others. Uh, First Bank, for instance, is quite particular in terms of this capacity building we talk about, who've been quite, appreci we appreciate their uh, support. Now, one thing in terms of theater in Nigeria, it's never really died. That's correct. It's never really died. It just hasn't had the oomph and mm. the support it's needed. And those who know to not just write for it, yeah. but also to produce and to have the right teams to bring theater to the next level, which is where Kakadu has gone and is going. Yeah. So that you are moving, you know, you're moving the bar. So that the students, I, I studied theater here in Nigeria. Yeah. So I know what it was like to look forward to how do I now mm. come to, what am I going to do for a career? Yeah. One lovely thing, for instance, this year, you have students who have studied, who saw Kakadu yeah. mm. as students who have now the opportunity to showcase their time as professional actors in the stage. So um, theater is growing and I laud all these producers yeah. to please do more. Mm. You have without culture without this tactile experience this emotional connected relieving of our experiences we die <laughs> fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and where can people get tickets um you can get tickets on uh, tix africa mm -hmm. and you can go to the website kakadu the musical.com it takes you right there great and we look forward to seeing you both <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We'll be there. I will 100% be there. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Thank you.